Hey guys, I'm going to show you guys um, how to create a uh, see-through bridge say in a top-down game like this so when you uh, move underneath the bridge you can see the player like so okay so let's get started um, in terms of scene um, I've just got a couple of cubes um, set up here and a plane and as for the player character um, I'm just gonna go assets import package character controller and uh, I've got it here I'm just gonna drag and drop the, uh, the third person controller and go inside sources prototype character constructor and I'm gonna drag and drop the animations uh, to my uh, object um, in the scene so that uh, you know it just uh, works the animations work I'm gonna change the height to 5 so that I end up with something like this alright so what you're gonna do is you're gonna cast away from the camera to the player and if it uh, hits something in between like the bridge we are gonna see if it's the bridge if it is then we're gonna make it uh, transparent All right. so to do that first off we'll just create a material and name it bridge and the shade should be something transparent so I'll make transparent uh, diffuse, transparent diffuse so that uh, when you change the transparency uh, the bridge's trans transparency changes okay so let's create a script All right. So in here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a public color. Transparent color and a private color, which is gonna be our initial color. All right. Now to start we're gonna do something like this likewise and we're gonna have two other methods um, one is gonna be set transparent um, which is gonna set the transparent color to our color second one is gonna set it back so it's gonna be like this all right um, drag it into the bridge change the color to something like bluish color with a um, half a transparency like that okay now we need to do the uh, the detection part of it so we'll call this obstruction uh, detector likewise um, create a new game object drag this in Okay, and here, first of all, we need to have a public transform. We call it player transform, and we're gonna have a, a enumerator. We call this detect player obstructions. And we're gonna have a yield return new four seconds seconds one second and let's um let's 
just see what happens here. We have, we need to start the code clean here as well. What this is going to do is this is going to call this method every uh, one second interval in every one second interval so that we have the uh, the ability to change the frequency of the update of the method uh, of the raycast actually. So we we'll get uh, you see that uh, prints every one second. Uh, if we put it in um, let's say in update or a fix update, you wouldn't have that flexibility. Okay, so that's done. Now let's uh, do the uh, gray casting bit. So for that to work, we need to have a direction. So I'm gonna say to the trans dot position camera dot main camera dot transform dot position. We are gonna have a normalized effect out of this, and also a ray cast head. Okay, so if uh, physics dot raycast, um, just gonna be this thing and direction out raycast head. Okay, so and we're gonna check afterwards. If something was hit, then does it have the bridge component in it? If it does, that means we hit the bridge. Yes? Okay. So, we're gonna check, okay, does the bridge exist? That means we hit the bridge. If that's so, we're gonna Set its transparency. Likewise. Okay. Make sure to have the controller signed there, in the character. And hopefully they should work yet. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you notice that it doesn't change back to the normal color. So for that to work, what you need to do is have a private bridge variable hmm. what is this okay you can say okay and if the raycast uh, didn't find any bridge then we're gonna check if the last bridge is not null. It's not null. That means it's uh, it's there, so that we can set it to normal, and then we can make it null so that it doesn't get called again. Okay. So and we'll set the the interval. For half second, okay. So transparent and change it back. That works. Cool. Um, that's fine. We can actually make this a bit more um, optimized. Um, for instance, like for now, uh, this method gets called every half second, whether you're under the bridge or not, whether whether you're near the bridge or not. So uh, we can simply do something like this. We can have like a really basic um, box collider uh, near the bridge, and if the player goes through that collider, then we are gonna activate the detection a bit. Otherwise, this wouldn't be called. Okay, All right. For that to work, we're gonna have two methods in here in the uh, the obstruction detector. Let us say start recasting. Let's say cast. Okay. Mm. Okay. So start coroutine. 
detect player obstructions likewise and before starting it we're gonna stop the coroutine as well because we don't know whether that coroutine is running or not at the moment okay so let's just copy this one say stop request let's do this okay um, I'm gonna take the this thing out right now let's create a script for the collider call it bridge collider so this is for this one okay this um, collider okay so I've dragged it in let's go in and edit this, this is going to be very simple uh, it's going to be void and trigger enter okay and if the dot sorry tag is equals to the player we can do something and same for exit Mm. There you go. So for this to work, we need to have a obstruction detector reference. Of course, and what you can do is I'm gonna start raycast. If you have the player enters the uh, Version box and stop it. The exits. Uh, actually, we can have debug logs in here to see. So, so just drag the reference of the obstruction detector into the collider as a Field, and that should be it so okay you see enter and you see exit and that's only when the rate cost actually happens and for instance in this area the rate cost will be, doesn't happen so it's it's optimized than the version that we had earlier so that's it hope you guys enjoyed it um, see you later.